Good morning, Houston, Galveston, Pasadena, Beaumont, and all surrounding areas. Welcome to How You Living with Robin B. and Dr. Kiva. We're here to give you the tools and the education information you need to live your best life. And my co-host, Dr. Kiva. Good morning. How you doing? I'm well. How are you doing Good, today? Thank you. Well, I, am I not getting any <laughs> luck here? My bad. Am I like the invisible man right now? I've just gotten so <laughs> used to you. Yes. <laughs> you, got, you know, I, I just, I, I, I love the way you brought it. You brought it in. I'm Robin B. And this is Dr. Kiva. And this dude and over this here. this dude over here is a figment of my imagination. That's what he is. That's he what is. happens. The men get taken. <laughs> you know, you take, we take advantage of you guys. We take you for granted. My bad. That's okay. okay. I, I still feel the love because we, I'm excited because for the first time, uh, we have Dr. Kiva Davis yeah. in the back. Yeah. We've been waiting. We've been waiting for you. <laughs> and before, before we introduce our guest, I think it's appropriate that we we introduce this amazing being. Yes. Oh, that's who I've known for, I've known for, is it? 15 years? Easily, probably, yeah. Wow. Gosh, that's a long time. I know, what? And you have an age to be. I was like, I might have been I about 10. Like this I old man. <laughs> like, seriously. Like, every time I saw him, like, how are you getting younger while I'm, like, getting all rickety and stuff, yeah, right? right? Well, so, well so, so Dr. Kiva, <laughs> so, so, so Dr. Kiva, when I met her, was not Dr. Kiva. No. She was in a completely different profession. Mm -hmm. And she really wanted to to transform and she did an amazing job. Uh, she is a certified reflexologist and uh, she thanks, to, thanks to Oscar. Oh, <laughs> wow. uh -huh. She was like, have you ever thought about this? I was like, huh. Well, let me think about reflexology. So it's because of you. Oh well, I, 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 I can't take that credit because you are amazing. And and then aromatherapy, and oh. then you did you you have always been since I've known you been an amazing yoga instructor. I, I call you a yoga master. You don't like that. <laughs> That's why I call her too. I say, and, uh, yoga when, master. She, when she started configuring into those pretzel shapes, yeah. I was like, master. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> That is amazing. <laughs> and, okay. and then went on from being a certified reflexologist, yoga master, and uh, all around amazing uh, holistic practitioner to being a doctor of chiropractic, awesome. yes. which is incredible. That is. So, That's beautiful. So I am just so proud and we feel so blessed to have you here. Absolutely. Welcome, Dr. Kiva Davis. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. And am I, uh, this program is all about health and wellness. So that's why it's going to be a perfect fit for the community because we're going to cover the gamut mm -hmm. of all health and wellness. Yes. And so that's why this is this program is so needed right yes. now. Yes. It really is. Yes. So I am excited. <laughs> nice. I, love it. I love it when that happens. Same here. Well, you know, I, I'm... I'm also thinking that, you know, if I if I start if my back starts hurting, I could just get keep it. Oh, yeah. I gotta do my got to have a good genetic. I love that. I, the first time I ever got it, I was terrified. But once that crack happened, oh yes. man, that neck crack. Do you do that? Oh, yes. yes, I do adjustments. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's not a neck crack, it's an adjustment. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little crack, just release of gas in between it. the joints. Ooh, and it just good. everything gets released. Yes, yes. yes. Well, yeah, I, I think calling it neck crack is a little bit scary. <laughs> <laughs> it, it intimidates potential, yeah. you know, anyone yeah, that's potential. not done it before. Yeah. But it is. It's it's a it's a euphoric experience yes, when when done correctly. Okay. Done correctly. correctly. Exactly. Yeah. So that that's amazing. So so just to just to move into where you were segueing just now, Dr. Kiva, uh, we we are uh, in unprecedented place right now yes mm -hmm. in our in our history in our timeline things have been coming at the american public one thing after another after another and we have a guest here who really operates deep inside that space yes he does so why don't you give give uh well mr dirk here a proper introduction so today we have mr dirk Minningfield. And he is a Christ, a Christ, a Christ. He's a, a child crisis, of Christ. Crisis, a child of Christ. Crisis counselor for, and he's a formal NBA player, and he's dedicated to counseling those in crisis. Let's see his history. You have a BS in social science from the University of Kentucky. 
Uh, he's a certified employee assistant professional Christ counselor. He's certified as a member of the American Association of Drugless Prevention mm-hmm. or Practitioners. He's a life coach and a co-founder co-founder of Sideline Coaching, Side Life Coaching. And Dirk is counseling. He's been counseling since 1991 at the John Lucas Treatment Center for athletes. And he counsels athletes for substance abuse and mental health disorders. Mm-hmm. And he's also worked. And he's also worked for the San, San, uh, San Francisco, <laughs> San Antonio Spurs, oh, wow. and, and and as their strength and conditioning coach. Ooh, I need for you to teach me some strength and conditioning for, <laughs> for my patients. That would be That's awesome. Good. I see a partnership for I, I already see it. I already see it in the stars. And thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. Thank you we appreciate you. So how exactly did you shift from being a basketball player to this kind of counseling? Wow. I mean, well, it really was a natural progression for me being a basketball player and going through some of the trials and tribulations that I had to go through in my own personal life. Mm -hmm. And after seeing, going through that transformation, I said, you know, I want to help other athletes not go through a lot of the things that I went through. And counseling for me was, it was easy. Mm -hmm. And because when you're an athlete, you have this regimen, you know, discipline. And counseling is like that. It's a regimen of discipline that you have to convince people to take on, to change themselves. And for me, it was a natural progression because of all the issues that I went through as a professional athlete, you know, with from, from drug abuse to, you know, uh, domestic violence, alcoholism, all that stuff I came in contact with mm-hmm. and got help for, mm-hmm. then I wanted to help someone else. Hmm. Now, do you only service athletes in your current position? No, I don't. Uh, I, in my current position, I also service the community. Okay. You know, I, I go out, I do a lot of talking at high schools. I counsel a lot of high school students, mostly males, okay. you know, because of the fact that we don't have a lot of role models, per se, in a, in a lot of the areas. That I counsel, you know, I, I counsel mainly in, you know, third, fifth ward. Okay. I do some a lot in Richmond, Texas. You know, a lot of people don't know, but Richmond, Texas per capita income is the poorest district in the state of Texas. It's poorer, Richmond? It's poorer than really? Sunnyside? Really? Yes, it is. Wow. Hmm. Huh. Wow. Yes, it is. Let, so, Dirk, let me, let me frame, let me tee this up a little bit differently uh, and, and get you to kind of speak on it from this standpoint. I read where the average child, because of all the violence that they see between the ages of zero and five, actually have more post-traumatic stress than someone who has been to a war. Wow. <laughs> In terms of actual violent impressions that they've, they've seen. Now, that situation gets exacerbated when they're in a poor community, when they're in a community where, as you just said, there are no role models per se, and they are constantly seeing violence right outside their front door. And the biggest potential hero is the drug dealer driving the fancy car with the big rims right. and, and the, uh, and the, the Jordans. Um, how, how are you reading that in the communities? Is that accurate? Number one. And number two, what can we start to think about changing to really affect that population? Well, I'm going to answer it backwards. I'm going to ask about the change first, mm-hmm. what we need to change. And, you know, and we see it happening right in front of our eyes with these protests and things, you know, that are protested in, in God rest George Floyd because he was the tipping point. Mm-hmm. But it, it's about economic equality because that's what those kids lack, mm. you know. And, and when, you, when you have a situation where there's no economics, there's going to be balance because and the kids are getting numb to that. So when, by the time they get to, like you say, five years old, it's commonplace for them because, one, in our neighborhoods, we don't have therapy that, that, that 
we can touch, you know, and we need more places there. We need more services there so that they can now have a place where they can begin to unfold that trauma that you're talking about that they see on a daily basis. But as long as there's economic inequality, then they're going to be subject to the violence. Yes. Wow. So, so break that down a little bit for people that are not really connecting the dots completely on a child that is in a low-income home. You're saying the majority of that trauma, the majority of that, po that post-traumatic stress <laughs> is literally the fact that they are poor. Exactly. Mm. And then they're dealing with the frustration, frustration of their parents. All those things that we know in mental health that come about, right. because of the, there's no economic structure and there's no economic hope. Mm -hmm. ah. mm -hmm. Because it's a state of hopelessness right. that they begin with. And then they have to take on that because of the fact that they go to school and they're wearing hand-me-downs or they, uh, uh, they weren't pants that they wore the year before. Mm -hmm. Right. Because they just can't afford it. So if so, how would it manifest itself? Say you have a five-year-old. Some of them are going to act out, but other ones just get really closed in. And that's the scary part, Doc. Mm -hmm. Because the ones we act out, we notice. Right. But the ones the that sit on the quiet, mm -hmm. those are the scary ones. Right. Those are the ones who you say come subject to the dope dealers. Right. Those are the ones who are subject to the gangs. Mm -hmm. Those are because they start from looking for love in right. all the wrong places. So yeah. in a sense, it's almost like we need to have it in schools just are around the community, period, for everyone, even if they act out that they don't act out, but it's the, the squeaky wheel gets the, gets the right. oil, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that, we identify the squeaky wheel as a problem. We don't right. identify the and quiet he'll, one. Right. But he's letting it all out. He's letting it all out <laughs> because mm -hmm. he's screaming for help. But it's well, John's saying, over there, quiet in a corner, probably planning something. Exactly. Yeah. But you and know, so we don't have that. We don't have that individual in the schools who can identify what mental health looks like. Mm. See, we can identify right. substance abuse. See, we can identify that. We can identify someone being hungry. Right. But can you identify the person who's over that is quiet, mm -hmm. is in a place of hopelessness? Because if they don't come with any bruises, if they don't act out, you ain't trained to notice the signs. Okay. Hmm. Well, you know, as I, as I listen to you, I, I think we should probably come to the inescapable conclusion that every child, <laughs> right. every child in that environment is traumatized to some degree is is subject to these dangers are there uh, we have about a minute before we go to break but are there preemptive measures that are, t are being taken yes i mean you know the city of houston has a number of agencies that are in the schools that are working with the schools you know you have busy bee wellness that over there on the southwest side that is sending out counselors to the schools you have four you have the council on alcohol and drugs for houston and fort bend county that are sending these counselors into the schools but they're only there for momentary what i mean by momentary two to three hours a day right. so what happens is like any any child okay uh Miss Borkin is here, so I'm going I'm to I'm act right. I was a problem right. child you at school. Know <laughs> but they make that connection. They right. do have that right. person, right. but that person needs to be there on a, on a daily basis, right. just like the teachers. So we have the necessary people in place. It's we not have the, the money, the right. resources to, to allocate it. Right. Wow. Hmm. Okay, you are list you are listening to How You Living here on Edge Radio how Network. How you living? How are you living? And and some of them are scary how they're yeah. living. We're, we're, we're living kind of scary. We're delving into the subject of trauma. And we want to invite you to share this page, share this information because this is affecting all of our young people right now. We'll take a break. We'll be back in just a moment. This program are that of the show host and guest. 
Not Edge Radio Network or Sega Broadcasting. 1540 AM and 101.7 FM. Edge Radio. Ever- this is Dr. Gabriel Arango with Arango Chiropractic Clinic. And today I'd like to inform you that doctors of chiropractic are primary contact health care providers who provide essential care, including but not limited to managing acute and urgent musculoskeletal conditions. These services are critical for managing cases that otherwise could end up in the emergency rooms, worsening an already difficult situation. It is important to note that chiropractic services also keep in place health care providers, first responders, and others who have physically strenuous jobs that support critical infrastructure, such as truck drivers who continue to ensure that America's health care and food supplies get to where they are needed during the COVID-19 pandemic. This information was brought to you by Arango Chiropractic Clinic and Edge Radio, 1540 AM and 101.7 FM. Text and work. Text we and work our whole lives to support our families. With one accident or illness, it can all be gone in an instant. Now there's a smart, affordable way to protect your family. Go to findhealthbenefits.com and discover low-cost life insurance for as little as $2 per month. Add to that a tax-deferred annuity that can help you protect your assets and grow your money for retirement. Learn more. Go to findhealthbenefits.com or call 877-235-6094. A critical illness can strike without warning and wipe out your life savings. In fact, it's the number one reason for bankruptcy. Find Health Benefits offers an affordable solution. Get up to $50,000 if you get cancer, stroke, or a heart attack, giving you the peace of mind to focus on getting better while the plan helps you to pay your bills and medical expenses. Learn more. Go to findhealthbenefits.com or call 877-235-6094. of seniors spend more time shopping. And we are back. You are listening to How You Living here on the Edge Radio Network. We are talking to uh, Mr. Dirk Minifield. We're having a great conversation right now. Uh, We started having some off air conversation <laughs> some some of which i said is is, is radio conversation yeah. so let's let, let let's come on back but but you know I, you, you just said something a moment ago and i want you to i want you to finish that story but i remember with my kids i i sat down with my two young boys these they were very young we were watching some nature show and it was about this this wildlife preserve and these elephants, these were teenage elephants now. So they were big. And they were running around, breaking down fences. They were killing the cows. They were, I mean, they, they, were, they, were, they were having sex with all the other They were going crazy. And the people that own this wildlife preserve said, hey, we're going to have to put them down because we can't control wow. them. And they finally decided to bring in an elephant whisperer. You know, some guy <laughs> that knows about elephants. The minute he came... He said, oh, I see your problem. He said, those, those two elephants right there, they don't have a bull here. A bull elephant is the male figure in that hierarchy. Mm. And they brought in two bull elephants. <laughs> and the first time those two upstarts jumped out of line, <laughs> boom! And they sat down and they behaved themselves. So they needed a I looked at my them. two boys and <laughs> I said, guys... I'm the bull elephant. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, 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 Dirk, talk to us about that piece, that 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 importance of that male mm. presence in the life of these young men. Oh, it's, it's it's so important. And think of the pandemic that's right now, and the loss that when I just look at the male athletes, right. the high school athletes that they've lost, they've lost competition, they've lost community, and the one thing that they've lost the most is that male that male figure, mm-hmm. most time is the coach right. that they identify with and trust. Because now they can't touch it. They 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 maybe talk to him on on, on online, but it's not the same for them. Hmm. You know, because now everything's been turned upside down. But if you if you equate that to the home 
equate that to the home, whereas that we know we've went over 30 years now where we've, we've seen the constantly decline of the family structure, whereas that moms, grandparents are raising the kids and there's no male figure. And what we find, you know, unfortunately is the prison population has went through the roof because they base it on that. But really it's not that. What it's based on for me, from my perspective, is that we don't go in and now we don't take a temperature check on the mental health of someone who don't have that male role figure. Why is he acting this way? Why is he doing that? What is he watching? You know, that is the demographic that gets overlooked, I'm sure, yes. that young male. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we call, see, you gotta remember, in, in, in our neighborhood, mm-hmm. the young female, she gets coddled, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Unless she has an early pregnancy. If she doesn't have right. that, she gets the resources she needs. Absolutely. But the males, they don't have that resource outlet. They're not playing athletics. They don't get the necessary resources. I mean, we have big brothers mm-hmm. and things of that nature. You have the churches that have some programs. But what we really need, what we really need is a program where is that Young males who go to penitentiary need to come out and talk to the young males that are coming behind. Mm-hmm. Because we got to break that cycle. You do. Yeah. So, so when you when you're saying that they don't have a male role model, mm-hmm. that's one aspect, and um, you know maybe no real family structure. Do you think that even playing some of those video games that they are so caught up in to desensitize them from death right. plays any role in in their aggression. Wow. You know, there's a study being done right now, right now as we speak, been doing, being done by the National Institutes of Health. And they're, they're studying the impact, just as like what you said, mm-hmm. video game desensitizing these young teenagers mm-hmm from feeling mm. they can they can disconnect mm-hmm. from the everyday world they can go into this fantasy world and then they've made it the video game makers have made it word that i can connect with you in massachusetts That's right, right. We, or in another country we can That's play right. against each uh-huh. other they matter of fact they professionalized that's them. right 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 yeah, to, yeah. To, 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 but they don't think about the impact the mental impact that they're having on these kids. Mm-hmm. You, you, you know, gosh, now, you, now you're going to make me become a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> make you become? I, 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 yeah, tend to, really. I tend to believe that they do know what they're doing. Oh, and that yeah. they and that they, they, they really have, have, have touched on something where this, I, I read an article and I never forgot this thing. It was in the early 90s when video games were just starting to really mature. And it said that the that the video game makers are building a new form of super predator because they're going to systematically desensitize children to acts of violence and they they have created this animalistic way of i mean just blowing people's heads off until these kids literally think it's a cartoon they they don't I, I remember I was down, I had a business, uh, Robin, well, both of you guys mm-hmm. would remember this. Remember that, the, the, hair. the, the hair, yeah. the hair, right on West Belford. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this young boy, 12, year, 12, 13 year old, runs up and just boom and shoulder slams the, the, the glass wall in the office built, oh. you know, the outside of the office. And I was yeah. walking out and said, hey, hey, don't, don't do that. I said, man, that could, that could hurt you. Or you could damage property. Don't don't do that. That that kid said f you, <laughs> and then he looked at his friend. I'm gonna go get my 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 oh piece my and off this dude. Oh my god! And I was like, oh my, this is a child. <laughs> you were traumatized. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> so 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 the desensitization starts very young, and it's very persistent. And these kids, by the time they they hold a gun in their hand, it's a magical tool that ends mm. life. But more than that, I think, and and, and t- tell me what your thoughts are on this piece. More than that, I think that young men are fighting for significance. They're fighting to be important. If I got a gun 
and I pull it out right now, everybody in this room is going to listen to me. I'm the boss right right now, right? So they're fighting for that significance. Do you see that to be true, or is there some other nuances? I I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I mean, you got to think. Me and you didn't know what an AK-47 was at the age of 12. Mm-hmm. Well, you go on a video game, you know what a rocket launcher is, you know what it is. I mean, and then you know how to operate. You, right. It tells you on the game how to break it down. Wow. So I, I, I agree with you that the desensitivity from the games and the, how do you say it, the promotion of violence. Yes. Because, and the significant that that person is getting in, believing that when I put this gun in my hand, I become somebody. Somebody going to recognize me. You know, and that's what we were talking about. Little Johnny who's sitting in the back, who's all quiet because of the fact of it is his home life is not in the perfect order for him to operate. So he he, he reclines into himself. Mm-hmm. And then you have the video games where he can escape. But in his escapism, he's being taught how to become violent. Right. It's being conditioned. So he yes. might be fought in the next school mm-hmm. shooting. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and, and that's the thing we don't want. Right. And that's what we have to to try to teach teachers. And that's why, you know, I teach life coaching certification. We have to teach people how to identify these mental health signs before they become a mental health issue. Mm-hmm. So, so with the, what could the parents... What what signs could the parents look for to say, okay, let me help with my child? What's you know, what are some of the blaring signs that they can well, see? One of the blaring signs is is that if irritability. If your child becomes real irritable by just simple mundane tasks, if you say, you know, you know, go clean your room and if they go to a level where it's that they normally wouldn't go and they be getting that becomes on a chronic type situation, that's that's the first sign. Mm-hmm. The second sign of it is is that if you see them start to pull away from social events, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? They don't want right. no social interaction. They want to isolate. You know, then you need to have a conversation with them and try to reach them and try to understand why you isolate, why you want to go just sit in your room and you don't want you know you don't want to go over and, and, and talk to Oliver. You'll go over and play with him no more. You have to ask those questions. But parents are so busy, right? That they can't they that they see it, but they're like, okay, well, you know, after I take care of the kitchen, and then I'm tired. I go to bed, and I don't forgot to have the conversation that I needed to have. Right. And so it's a, it's a juggling act, right? And but if and that's why we need those resources. Mm-hmm. So if you are busy. You can say, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna call somebody at the crisis center just to get me some information. But that's the other thing that our culture we don't do. I was about to ask mm. you that question. Historically, we it's almost taboo to us uh, yeah. seeking mental health support. Well, we don't want people to know we need help, right? Because you gotta remember, we're survival by nature. Mm-hmm. We're we're taught to survive because of the fact we come out of that impact of poor economics. So. In your survival skills, you only depended on you. Right. And now, I got to call Oliver to take care of my son. <laughs> I am not doing that. Especially so, back in the day, it was like, you don't tell family business. Right. No, you don't put our business out in right. the street. Exactly. And right. That's, and, that's and, and they have auntie up in the attic hiding, you right. know, or, See, you know. And, you know, and, and, that's, and, that's, and that's the problem with mental health mm-hmm. in our community. Because everybody thinks it's a taboo. Because i uh, Man, I'm not crazy. I don't need to go talk to Dirk, man, because they're gonna think I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, or, or they're gonna think my child is crazy. Yeah. You know, so mm-hmm. what, what happens? We take them to a doctor, they diagnose them. And they give them medication. And give them medication. Give them rhythm yeah. and all of this, and we mask the symptoms. Mm-hmm. Right? And then and then when they get 18, when they can legally go off the medication. Now it all bursts loose. That's right. We just That's make right. it early so, druggies. Yes. Early so, druggies. So we're right up against the break here. So, folks, you're listening to How You Living here on the Edge Radio Network. We are talking to uh, Dirk uh, Minifield, a specialist in trauma and in uh, crisis. And we are going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to find out how we can implement some tools so that all of us can contribute to solving this problem. Back in just a moment. 
The only thing better than playing a hero in the movies is being a hero in real life. Like the 50,000 veterans who returned from Iraq and Afghanistan with devastating injuries. They are true heroes, and they're why I'm proud to support Paralyzed Veterans of America. And some foreign food, some ethnic flavor. Veterans of America has made a promise to never leave a fallen comrade behind. They make sure veterans with spinal cord injuries get the quality medical care, rehabilitation, and housing they need when they come home. They stay with our fallen heroes for the long term, offering counseling, job training, and support to help them regain the freedom and independence they fought so hard for, all at no cost to them. Our veterans fought for us. Let's fight for them. To learn more about how you can help, visit pva.org. That's pva.org. We will never leave a fallen comrade behind. So let's talk a little bit about intuitive communication. You know, one of the things that I've always found very fascinating is how we instinctively have a connection to one another. And it's one of those things that no one can really explain. They just seem to feel it. I've always believed that in the realm of creativity, we're connected to a higher source. Some people call it the morphic field. Some people call it the cause of all causes or the knowing or God or any number of different things. And whatever your belief systems are, you can appreciate that we all have a higher intelligence. And that's why when I look at what is happening. And we are back. You are listening to the Edge Radio Network. We are <laughs> talking about how you're living <laughs> yes. with, uh, with Robin B. and Dr. Dr. Kiva. Uh, so far, this has been an amazing conversation, yeah, right? Guys? It, has. it has. Very enlightening. Wow. So, oh, during, during the break, I asked, because uh, I work with a nonprofit organization, and we go into the schools to teach yoga, meditation, and you know, functional movement. And I think this would be an awesome fit for that also for people that are in our nonprofit to say, okay, well, we can get certified for this because we are going into melanated schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so tell us more about the, um, the certification. Well, I'm, I'm co-founder of SidelineLifeCoaching.com along with my partner, Cliff Robson, that wasn't available today to come on the show. And, but I'll have him on it later, I promise you. The certification we initially started was based on for athletes, you know, we, we, because we, we, we service a lot of athletes. But what we've done is broaden it into life coaching. And what we teach is, what we certify you is how to identify mental health and substance abuse issues in a male-dominated population, particularly our population. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is we want life coaches that will be able to share their life experience. We teach you how to share your life experience, but also we give you the tools to know, to identify when kids are irritable, depressed, angry, and tired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, because tiredness is another phase a mental health issue that people don't talk about. Right. Mm. But we teach you, we give you the tools to be able to identify that so that you can say, you know, maybe I need to work with this kid one on one because now this kid is not getting the necessary resources. Like when you see little Johnny with his head on the desk. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Or you see or you see or you see little Johnny acting out, jumping on the desk. All right. You know, it's something behind him jumping on the desk. It's not just that he's ADHD. It's some more things there. And so we give you the tools to be able to explore that, to help look at How know, long does I, it take for the certification? Well, it's at your own pace, it's online. Okay. I mean, if you wanted to do it, you could do it in, in three months, you could do it in six months, you know. And and we we provide you support along the way. You know, you can call us, you know, email us, and we'll, we'll answer any of your questions. And what we do, it, once you have the certification, we direct you to the resources to where you can begin to utilize your certification. 
So, you, you know, one of the most impactful things, I think, uh, when I was in ninth grade, just got to high school, I had my head down like little Johnny because <laughs> I was feeling I was feeling really sort of depressed. All my friends uh, weren't with me in this new high school, etc. And there was one African-American teacher. I had my head down in English and she tapped me. She said, what's the matter with you? And I said, oh, these kids are making fun of me because I use big words. <laughs> and she looked at me. She said, when when, when those those good for nothings are, are out there flipping burgers, you're going to own your own company. And she spoke that into me. Wow. And it was wow. very powerful. That's powerful. When you have children that are acculturated into an environment where if they act up, big mama is going to smack them down. Right. <laughs> and if daddy's around, he don't have no tolerance for that either. Right. So how do, you, how do you finesse that into the nurturing and the speaking of life into these kids? Because that's what my teacher did for me, right. and it impacted me. Mm-hmm. Well, the biggest thing you just hit on, every kid looks for hope, no matter where it comes from. And once they can get that hope, they're going to latch on to it. That's why dope dealers are so good. Mm-hmm. That's why gangs are so good. Because they give them hope. Yeah. And what we have to have is we have to have that connection from Big Mama to the school that she had when we was there. Right. See, now there's no connection for Big Mama because Big Mama just go online, check the grades. But she don't make that contact to the teachers to make the teacher understand that, look, this is what I require my kid, my grandson at at home. And I need the same requirement when he's in school. Once you make that connection, now you get that support from that teacher. But if you're just managing it online, like most people do, then what happens is, is that when little Johnny go to school, he's like, okay, ain't no reinforcement for what grandma, grandma's not here. So I can do what I want. Right. Mm. But you know what's what's interesting, especially if you talk to teachers, they're they're probably maybe overworked. The class size is maybe too large. It should be a smaller class size. Mm-hmm. And they have to underpaid. Underpaid. <laughs> and then they have to teach towards the test so that way the students can pass the test so the school can be, you know, have a better ranking. And that's true. And that's true in a lot of instances. But in a lot of situations, I know here in the city of Houston, in most of our schools in, in, in the HISD, there are teachers there that really care about the success of the students. But then what happened is they'll put that same little boy who's probably really intelligent in special ed classes. Mm. What or- are you talking about? That, yeah. <laughs> But that's but see, that's a systematic problem. And that's all I'm saying from the top. top yes. It needs to kind of change yeah. their viewpoint also. And 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 they have to change their viewpoint. But the thing about it of it is is that it's like like what's happening right now. If you want change, you gotta get involved. Right. You know, you can't sit on the sideline and criticize Sterling High School if you've never been over to Sterling High School. Mm-hmm. If you've never right. been over there, you don't know the dynamic of the culture. And we're selling this short, you know, because they have just give you give you give you a step. They have just went in five years from a school that had a thirty percent drop that had a over fifty percent dropout rate of ninth graders, right? Mm-hmm. Which was one of the highest in the city. Now they're below thirty percent in five years, and they and the graduation rate went from. 30% to 70% in that same five year period. And the only thing they did was, was they created a peer to peer groups for each level of class where the kids could begin to talk about what was going on. Hmm. And they had a counselor come in that they could talk to a one on one where they didn't have to be called out. But the kids was helping each other. And the graduates was coming back. But that's one of the tools we got to begin to use. We can't just say, Oliver, you graduated by, you did a great job. We need you to come back to help the kids that are coming behind you to talk about your experience and how you got out. Because if we don't build that bridge, then how are we going to keep sending them out? 
Hmm. Yeah, it, you know, I remember when my kid was young and 10 years old, and I got called into a counselor meeting because you just touched on this. And I want parents listening to this to share this and talk about this specifically is that they brought me into a room. I'm in a white suburb. My 10 year old is very rambunctious. The kid literally was talking at nine months old. I have video of it. Very smart, was reading at three. And now I'm being told by a group of these specialists that mm -hmm. my kid has ADD, ADHD, and they strongly recommend for him to continue uh, that we would put him in special ed possibly, but we want him on Ritalin. He was <laughs> and, bored. And I was he like, was bored with you want him on what? Oh my God. And I said, I said, uh, well, I'm going to agree to have the psychiatrist look at him, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to agree to giving him a, a gateway drug, right. which is what that is. Right. And African-American children are statistically at a much higher probability to be prescribed those drugs. And those drugs tend to be gateway drugs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I did that was different and I want parents to do this. If your kid's having a problem, of course, now they're just driving you crazy at home because of, <laughs> because of COVID. Right. But, that but, lack of structure. Yeah, the lack of structure. Get, I got that kid off the Pop-Tarts, off the sugar-frosted flakes. It's the diet. Oh, my gosh. It's and all diet. of a sudden, I, I gave him like some cleansing and detox mm -hmm. stuff, which he did not like. But I said, this is better than medicine. Right. He was cool with that. His behavior changed overnight, literally within the next week. Did you get him on the medication, Mr. Hines? I was like, hell no. I got him off the, the, the drugs that the Food and Drug Administration approved to put in my child. That's what I did. That's genius. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. It was surreal because I saw the way he would have gone down that track. Absolutely. So so you, you've, you've seen and you've dealt with that. What level of parental involvement do you see? Because I, one of my teachers, a, a, a Caucasian teacher who was very caring and loving said, it's just, I wish more parents were like you that showed up. And that's what you get. Mm -hmm. And that's what I see, mm -hmm. you know, in working in the schools is that, you know, the teachers want the parents involved. A lot of times, you know, especially when, when we talk about that, the poor economics and inequality, the parents can't get there. Mm -hmm. You know, so what they did in Richmond, they try to have in-home visits. Mm -hmm. You know, they allow the teachers to go out to the homes to, to meet the parents because they know they need this bridge mm -hmm. so that because everybody that is teaching the kid has the same concern. We want him to be successful. But the problem of it is, is this, is that we got to convince the kid that he can be successful right. Right. because the when you come out of that poor economic inequality, you have low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. You don't believe that you can change your environment. You don't believe you can change your situation through education. So what? Because you don't have no money in your pocket. Mm -hmm. And then I'm looking across the street, you know, at, at, at my cousin Joe, and he got a car. You know what I'm saying? He got a pocket full of money. And he's slanging dope. So that looked attractive to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we find. And you know what's, what's, what Oscar brought up is um, being in that environment, you know, you only have fried foods and stuff around you. Yeah, yeah. They don't have really fresh right. fruits Real and fruit. vegetables <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the stores themselves. So they're not even getting the minerals that they need for the basic. Because it's, it's in, the, in the yoga community, we always talk about, you know, energy, right? right? And if you are in survival mode, you're not really able to think of something greater and higher because you are just mm -hmm. survival, survival mode. Mm -hmm. And so I, I like the fact that some people are, are talking to the parents because it, it really starts with that foundation of saying, well, make sure they're drinking water or whatever you can, even if it's frozen fruits and vegetables, do that. And mm -hmm. you know, if you can't get fresh, but we're in a community of soul food, we like the grease, we mm -hmm. like the, sh we, and they get us addicted to the sugars and the salts. But, it, but, and you're correct about the diet. And I, and I commend Oliver for taking that Oscar. stand. Oscar. Oscar. Uh -huh. For taking that stand because that, that changed the course of yeah. his son. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. but, he was educated. But think of all the parents who don't know, who don't, don't have that common sense. sense. Right. Who don't, that who haven't diet. been educated on that. Right. Because this, and this is what I grew up on. This should be good enough for you. Right, right, right. You know, this is what but I there weren't so many chemicals in your piece. food. 
Yeah. Yeah. Eat the pig feet. You know? <laughs> right, right. And, and that is another battle that we're fighting, mm -hmm. you know, and that we we we, we don't have the resources mm -hmm. to get to the community to teach them about good diet. Mm -hmm. You know, right. the, the the evils of sugar right. for someone who is in their informative years mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the way that impacts their behavior. Mm -hmm. We see it, you, you get some bits and pieces. messages yeah. of it, but we don't have, see, in, in, our, in our community, we need to touch. We need to touch it mm -hmm. before we believe it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's like touching. You know, your grandma used to tell you, you go touch that fire boy. You're going to learn what he is. And what we do, we go over and touch it. And then we're like, okay, all right. Yeah. We, it. we only do it one time. Exactly. <laughs> that's the thing that we have to understand. That's how we learn. Right. Yeah. See, we got to go back. And this is what we're trying to do in mental health. We're trying to go back. And cheat and, and, and help people to learn where they are. Instead of trying to start up here and get you up here, I gotta go down here so that I can walk you through the steps to get you here. Mm -hmm. And that and that is the thing that you're talking about with the diet, because there's been inroads, but the problem of it is the schools still do it too. Yeah, oh yeah, they have mm -hmm. Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. At you school. know, they, right. they, you know, you go to school now in some of these suburbs, and I mean it's like, I mean, they, they got restaurants that come in and set up for mm -hmm. lunch. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're just giving them a foundation for failure almost. Well, you it's, know? it's really, really tough because we're, we're a culture that we have so many layers, you know, but it's not insurmountable. Mm -hmm. so, so if there's someone who's listening right now who is in some sort of crisis, what would you, what's the one piece of advice that you would give to them? Well, the one piece of advice that I would give to you is that reach out to the resources in your community. You know, there's hotline, there's crisis hotline. You know, I, I know Busy Bee Wellness mm -hmm. does on-site counseling at their wellness center over on West Belford. You know, and I, I know the Houston Council on Alcohol and Drugs has a lot of resources for okay. mental health stuff. But also, I, I would tell you this, is that if you see your kid that is having issues, and when I say having issues, is starting to not want to have social interaction. And, and this is hard in this pandemic because mm -hmm. we, we're dealing with social distancing. Right. So it's hard to notice it. But if you see them isolated, if you see them being irritable, if you see them have insomnia, that a lot of people are having, a lot of kids can't are sleep. having this trying to can't sleep, right. staying up all night. And a lot of people think that's just because of the pandemic, but it's a depressive state that they're beginning to get into. Mm -hmm. And if you see those things, you need to call those resources, the Crisis Hotline okay. of Harris County, the Crisis Hotline of Fort Bend, Montgomery, wherever it's at, in Galveston, Galveston County. You know, is, is that something 311 could help them with? You know, a lot of people call 311. Yes. Okay. And then you because sometimes. Resources. I know in, in Harris County, I don't know about the surrounding. Well, County, Fort Bend, they Fort Bend have, has yes. it. Okay. I don't know if Galveston has it. But, okay. you, but you have uh, the Gulf Coast okay. Council down there that you can call and you can get those resources. Okay. You know, but I would, I would or take them to the nearest pediatrician real quick. Mm -hmm. Because pediatrician. The one thing they're going to see, they're going to notice they can't treat them. Okay. And then they'll they they refer them out. Them, they'll refer them out. That's yeah. good. Now, so we, we've talked a lot about schools, but now you work with athletes also. Yes. Tell us, tell us more about tell us more about the work that you do with athletes. Yeah. Oh, well, now, he, now he stood up straight. Yeah. He got up straight when talking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's what I do with athletes, and, and like, you know, I, I spoke on a little bit about what I do with the high school athletes because they're dealing with so much loss right mm -hmm. now and, and, and unknown mm -hmm. because it's still not known whether or not they're officially going to go to school or they're going to be have to stay at home. And once that determination, so I'm dealing with them to prepare for this loss because mm -hmm. it's a it, it could be a total loss. Especially if you're a senior, too. Right. Yes. Oh, yeah. And you don't get it back. And you're yeah. a basketball star. And right. that was your identity. Or a football star. Or a football star. And that was all yeah. you identified exactly. with. Yeah. And, 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 and so, what is that world going to look like for them? You know, how do they navigate? Mm -hmm. Because now, 
all my identity, and that's the problem with sports. And, and me and my partner, we always have a set. Basketball is what I did. Mm-hmm. That's not who my you are. Mm-hmm. That's a big piece that we work with these young men on, because they all they put it all in one basket. You know, you hope that they don't, but majority of them do. You know, and you you have your exceptions, but working with those athletes, what we're trying to do now is prepare them for the next stage and what the next stage Mm -hmm. looks like for them not athletically Mm -hmm. but personally Mm -hmm. and educationally Mm -hmm. because we want to work with the whole individual the athletics takes care of themselves Mm -hmm. you are who you are you know you put the work in you know you you get the claim or you don't Right. That's just the way that is. Mm-hmm. That's cut and dry. Mm-hmm. And there's dynamics to that. But those dynamics happen over here. They just be brought to the court. Right. So if we don't deal with this, we can't help them as an athlete. So your primary goal is to have the current athletes have their, find their way once they're done with the NBA? Yes. Is that what you guys do? Yeah. And, you know, and, 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 and that's at the top end when mm-hmm. you get to talk about the NBA. But you still get them in crisis you also. You still get them in crisis. And, you know? and, and we have a lot of crisis right now. Mm. And because, you know, it just got announced mm-hmm. that only 22 teams in the NBA. And, and for you people out there, I work with the NBA and I, I, I do crisis management and I do, anti, and I work with the anti-drug program. Well, that creates a problem in itself because now financially these players had to give up 25 percent which which going to equate to 40 percent of their pay millions mm-hmm. you know, yeah. so you're talking millions of dollars that they got to give up now there's eight teams that are not going to get to play mm. they have to wait to november before the season to start back up so their season is over so now they have been docked pay okay. and they can't go play and now they're dealing with okay and how you get them unemployment <laughs> they don't get unemployment they don't qualify yeah, they don't even qualify. if they did they right don't they don't so get that 600 how do you deal with <laughs> how do you deal with somebody who has been irresponsible exactly they've already spent it all up exactly. before they even got because that check they, you gotta remember they came into this year right. based on the fact that i was going to right. get a full i'm on the already bought my, my house right. Whole contract. <laughs> right but i'm now you're gonna tell me i gotta get 40 percent of it but, but you know it it i think it's it's a powerful lesson but a, a very important one you know there there is a and some people might be familiar with this term. There's something called a marshmallow test. And they gave this test to kids back in the 70s and 60s. And the idea was... You give it today. Yeah. The idea was, I could give you one marshmallow right now. Mm-hmm. Or if you're willing to wait an hour, I'll give you five marshmallows. But you got to wait that hour. Mm. And, you know, the I've vast majority of kids were right about the immediate satisfaction. Mm-hmm. That was a predictor of how well they would do financially and scholastically in their life. Wow. Because they, the, the ones that were willing to put off the immediate gratification and, and wait literally had a propensity towards patience and the recognition that hard work does pay off. So when we're, we're, we're just about out of time, Dirk, but I, I, I wanted to just ask you this uh, real quick. With regard to parental training, because it's one thing to train the kid, but I know a lot of parents out there that are just not with the program. Mm-hmm. Is there something there to train those parents? Yes, there is. And, and, and one of the things we're doing on Sideline Life Coaching, and, and people can contact us at contactsidelinelifecoaching.com. You can email us. We are now creating a certification for the parents. Oh, right. right. To teach them Wonderful. how to identify, how to coach, to teach them the tools that they need to help their children. And, and, and this is just not males, it's females, and it's girls and, and boys. And the reason we started that was just about what you said, because we said, oh, well, they got life experiences that they need to deal with. And if they can deal with them, if they can be taught how to deal with their own stuff mm-hmm. and give it, It'll, it'll make it'll make a world of difference in their kids, and if they take these, if they get this certification, because one of the things about the certification, 
is that you got to heal your own stuff right. to be able to coach something. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. You know what I'm saying? Tell us again. Put how oxygen on yourself first. That's exactly. absolutely, that's absolutely that's right. right. That's email us at contactsidelinelifecoaching.com and we will get right back to you within a couple of Say it one more okay. time. Contact at Contact at, at sidelinelifecoaching.com. Hey, we're, we're social media too. Do you have any social media accounts? Yes, we do. We have, uh, we, we're on Facebook. Instagram, <laughs> Facebook. And y'all have to forgive me because I, I usually don't come on and, and I, I don't talk about hey, hey, what hey. I do. You're rocking it. You're rocking it. Yeah. And she knows that I just. We needed this. So yeah. you're on Instagram and Facebook, all yes, sideline coaching? All sideline coaching, yes. yes. Outstanding, outstanding. Wow, excellent, excellent information. Dirk, we want to just thank you for thank being you, here. We appreciate well, thank you. Thank you all for having me. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I look forward to coming back. Yeah, oh, we, yeah. Out of we definitely, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you Looking what. Looking forward to that. When I'm taking my certification. Yeah, that's right, that's right. We'll have life, talk shop. life coach, yoga master. Yeah. We'll just do it all. Why not? We'll just do it all. Well, folks. Uh, this is a nice slice of how you live in. I love it. I love it. I love it. Great conversation. Very relevant. Very, very relevant to our times. Mm -hmm. We want to invite you to share this program and reach out for those young men and families that are in crisis, young women that are in crisis. Uh, that's what you do, Dirk. Busy B was the other program. Yeah, yeah Busy B Wellness. Busy B Wellness. So, that's what's the yes. So, folks, oh, reach great. out. And get with these folks. It's time for us to peel back the layers of shame and start dealing with what we need. We have been traumatized in many respects. Let's let's get past the shame and let's get to the healing because it's that time. Amen. 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 Yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Kiva, for, for, for coming and blessing us with your love you here. Absolutely. <laughs> and Robin B., my girl, I All love right. you. Well, next <laughs> week, you, you are the anchor. You, I'm yeah, just going right. to hang out on the sit back <laughs> in a crazy <laughs> chair. All right, hold, on <laughs> to you. hold on to your hats next week, okay? We're going we to be sipping some tea with Robin yeah. B. I'll be bringing I'm some tea. You okay, go <laughs> away. But All thanks, right. everybody. All right, folks, we love you. Stay safe. Uh, we'll be back next week on How You Living right here on Edge Radio, 1540 AM, 101.7 FM. Share, share, share. Share, share. Become share, part of the share. tribe. Right. Mm -hmm. Peace. 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 <laughs> ...who provide essential care, including but not limited to managing acute and urgent musculoskeletal condition. These services are critical for managing cases that otherwise could end up in the emergency rooms, worsening an already difficult situation. It is important to note that chiropractic services also keep in place health care providers, first responders, and others who have physically strenuous jobs that support critical infrastructure, such as truck drivers who continue to ensure that America's health care and food supplies get to where they are needed during the COVID-19 pandemic. This information was brought to you by Arango Chiropractic Clinic and Edge Radio, 1540 AM and 101.7 FM. Hi, I'm Ben Affleck. The only thing better than playing a hero in the movies is being a hero in real life. Like the 50,000 veterans who returned from Iraq and Afghanistan with devastating injuries. They are true heroes, and they're why I'm proud to support Paralyzed Veterans of America. For more than 60 years, Paralyzed Veterans of America has made a promise to never leave a fallen comrade behind. They make sure veterans with spinal cord injuries get the quality medical care, rehabilitation, and housing they need when they come home. They stay with our fallen heroes for the long term, offering counseling, job training, and support to help them regain the freedom and independence they fought so hard for, all at no cost to them. Our veterans fought for us. Let's fight for them. To learn more about how you can help, visit pva.org. That's pva.org. We will never leave a fallen comrade behind. The views and opinions expressed in this program are that of the show host and guest, not Edge Radio Network or SEGA Broadcasting. If you ever find yourself stuck in the middle of the sea, I'll sail the world to find you. 
If you ever find yourself lost in the dark and you can't see